Today is day two of 4.2, which is going over inverse functions. I went ahead and put a warm up that is actually the last question from the homework. I figured that's where most of the difficulty would have been. Here, what I want to do is prove that f of x and g of x are inverses of one another. So we're going to have to use composition functions. You need to prove that f of g of x equals x and also that g of f of x equals x. Let's start with f of g of x. This is saying that it is the function evaluated at g of x, which is x minus 4 over 3. That means we're going to go to the f function and plug in x minus 4 over 3 for x, meaning it becomes 3 times x minus 4 over 3 plus 4. Then you want to clean it up and see, do we really get x? Well, the 3's cancel, and I'm left with x minus 4 plus 4, where the 4's cancel, and I do get x. Then we're going to do g of f of x, which says that it is the g function evaluated at, so we're plugging in f of x, that's 3x plus 4. We're going to take a look at the g function, which is right here, and we're plugging in a 3x plus 4, where we see x making it 3x plus 4 minus 4 over 3. You can see that the 4's cancel, we're left with 3x over 3, the 3's cancel, we get x. It works. Yes, they are inverses. For example 2, given the graph, we're going to find the coordinates of the inverse, graph it, and identify if the inverse is a function or not. For 2a, this is the graph we're looking at here. You can see I indicated three points that I'm going to be using. 2, 6, 0, 1, and negative 2, negative 4. We learned in day 1 that the points for the inverse will just be the coordinates where the x and y values have been switched. So we're going to switch x and y. That becomes 6, 2, 1, 0, negative 4, negative 2. Before I plot these points, I do want to point out that in our original function, the domain, which are the x values moving from left to right, would be all real numbers, because as we move to the left, the function will always be defined. As we move to the right, the function will always be defined. And then the range is all real numbers because range is down to up for the y values. It's going down forever, it's going up forever. You could also, if you wanted to, put negative infinity to positive infinity for either of those. Those two statements are equivalent. Now let's go ahead and plot the points for our inverse function. We have 6, 2, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units to the right, and then 2 units up. We have 1, 0, so 1 unit to the right. And then we have negative 4, negative 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4 units to the left, and 2 down gives me that coordinate. I'm going to connect these points with a straight line, since this clearly is a linear function. And state what the domain and range would be. Because it's linear, it's all real numbers, once again. Just a reminder from geometry and what we talked about on Monday. A inverse, graphically speaking, is a reflection of the function over the line y equals x. So y equals x is right there. It passes through the origin and it has a slope of 1. You can see that our inverse, which I have in purple, is the mirror image of the original function, which is in black. Just wanted to point that out, and now we have the last part. Is the inverse a function? Well, in order to determine that, we need to see, does it pass what's called the vertical line test? If a vertical line is moved across the graph and at any time touches the graph at only one point, then the graph is a function. If it crosses more than once, then it would not be a function. So as you can see, if I were to draw a vertical line here, there'd only be one point of intersection. Or here, one point. Anywhere that I draw a vertical line, it's only going to pass through the inverse, so my purple graph, at one point. 
meaning yes, it does pass the vertical line test, so it is a function. For part B, we have my original function right here. I've indicated the coordinates I want to use. First, I'm going to list the domain and range. It's a little hard to see here, but there actually is an asymptote at the line y equals negative 6. That's important for when we're listing the domain and range. Domain is left to right, so the function has no restrictions as it moves to the left or right, so that would be all real numbers. The range, however, is restricted. The range is down to up. The furthest down it can go is to negative 6, so I'm going to put a negative 6 here, and then it can go up towards infinity. It can approach negative 6 and get infinitely close, but it never will get there because we have an asymptote, so there should be a parentheses there. And then there should also be a parentheses with the infinity because it can approach infinity but never reach infinity. To get the inverse points, we just switch the x and y of our coordinates. So that's negative 4, negative 1, negative 2, 2.5, and 2, 4. Plotting those points on the coordinate plane, I'll do the same. For the inverse, remember it's going to be a mirror image, so it should have the same general shape. It's going to have that smooth curve looking to be right about like that. Not only is the graph reflected about the line y equals x, but so is the asymptote. So the asymptote will no longer be at y equals negative 6. It now will be at x equals negative 6. That's important for when we're listing the domain and range. So now the domain is restricted. The furthest left it can go is negative 6, and it will go right forever towards positive infinity. And then the range is no longer restricted. It goes down forever, up forever. That's all real numbers. Notice how not only did the x and y values switch, but so did the domain and range. Think about it. Domain, that's really x's. Range, that's really the y's. So it makes sense, if an inverse is the opposite, that the domain and range would switch for these functions. Now I need to test, is the inverse a function? So looking at just the purple graph, if I were to draw a vertical line anywhere on this graph, would it pass through the graph only once? And the answer is yes. So it is a function. Lastly, we have a parabola right here. I've indicated the points that I want to use. There should be parentheses right there. Um, the domain of this parabola would be all real numbers because it's not restricted as I move left and right, but it is restricted as I move up and down because I have a minimum value here at negative 3, 0. So range is the y values. The furthest down it can go is 0. The furthest up it could go is towards positive infinity. Now here, 0 is included, so I should put a bracket. Infinity is not included, so that would be a parentheses. Now I'm going to plot the points for my inverse function. First, I need to list them. You just switch the x and y's. So 1, negative 2, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 4. Here's 1, negative 2, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 4. This sort of looks like a uh, slanted parabola, so instead of going up and down, it's moving left to right, which does impact our domain and range. The domain of this function should always be left to right, so the furthest left it could go is at the x value of 0. I'm going to put a bracket there because it is included on this point, and then it's going to go right forever towards infinity. Range, it goes down forever and up forever, so all real numbers. Again, notice the domain and range basically just switch.
Is this inverse a function? So does it pass the vertical line test? No, it does not. If I draw a vertical line here, you can see that I found an example where it crosses more than once. It crosses twice. So the answer is no, that is not a function. Now we're going to write the inverse, graph both, give the domain and range of both. If I'm going to be graphing the x over 4 plus 2, the first thing that I'd like you to do is create a table using negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. We've done something like this before. In order to get the y values, you just plug them in. So I have negative 2 over 4 plus 2. That's a negative 1 half plus 2, or 1.5. Negative 1 over 4 plus 2 becomes 1.75. 0 over 4 plus 2, that's just 0 plus 2, or 2. 1 over 4 plus 2, that's 2.25, or 2 and 1 fourth. And then 2 over 4 plus 2, that's 1 half plus 2, or 2.5. And I now have a set of coordinates for my function. That would be at 2... 1.5, which is right here, or negative 2, 1.5. Negative 2, 1.75 is right here. 0, 2, 1, 2.25, and then 2, 2.5. We have a linear function, it looks like, that would look something like this. So the domain would be all real numbers. The inverse function, its coordinates would just be the y and x values switch. So 1.5, 1 1.75, 2, 2.25, 2.5, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So go ahead and plot those points. I will do the same. I'm actually going to pause it because I'm starting to run low on time. So hit play when you're done. So this line right here is my original function. This line right here is my inverse function. Remember, that's inverse notation. The domain and range would be all real numbers once again because it is, in fact, linear. If I wanted to write the inverse function, which it does ask, you would have to do some solving here. So this is y equals x over 4 plus 2. In order to find the inverse, you switch the x and the y and start solving. You would subtract 2 first, leaving you with x minus 2 equals y over 4. Then you would multiply each side by 4. Make sure that you put parentheses around the x minus 2. So my inverse function, distribute the 4, becomes 4x minus 8. All that's left is to determine is the inverse a function, why or why not. Here's my inverse function right here. I need to see, does it pass the vertical line test? So as I draw any vertical line, will it only pass through the inverse function at one point? The answer is yes, where it says why, you could say because it passes the vertical line test.